or something. The passengers' lives are in your hands. One thing I love doing here on the channel is looking back into my own childhood for semi or fully forgotten shows. While I was working on one of my last videos about Yakety Yak, check it out if you haven't seen that video yet, I fell into a rabbit hole of remembering all of the shows that were on the other Nickelodeon channel, Nicktoons alongside Yakety Yak. It was like every vague memory I ever had came flooding back. But one, more than any other, stood out to me as I remembered that I enjoyed watching it when I would catch it on the Nicktoons channel at various hours of the day. Now there are plenty of other shows that I will cover from the forgotten well of Nicktoons, so make sure to hit that like button for more videos like this and subscribe. We are dangerously close to 50,000 subscribers and I cannot thank you enough. But today, we are going to take a look back into a show about a talking dog and his dog sitter, and find out why we barely remember it. This is Corneal and Bernie. <laughs> Corneal and Bernie, or otherwise known in various locations around the world as Watch My Chops, follows the wacky adventures of a sophisticated talking dog and the only person who knows that he can speak, his dog sitter, Bernie. A more eccentric, fun-seeking guy who is the exact opposite personality type. Corneal is smart, very smart in fact, if that wasn't clear already because, you know, the whole talking thing. He doesn't want his secret of talking getting out in fear of his luxurious lifestyle from his rich owners taken away by means of scientific tests on him or some weird form of celebrity status. He's comfortable in the life that he lives and he doesn't want that changed. Bernie is not smart. He's not a complete idiot like you'd maybe see on some other shows, but when it comes to stuff like education, he's not the brightest. You know, Bernie, sometimes you're brilliant. I know. You're fighting so you can watch everyone around you die. Mark. Nor is he ever really truly interested in it. What he does like is the credit for things, and that seems to be the main give and take of the show. Bernie would usually get the pair in some sort of circumstance, and Corneal would figure a way out of it using his higher intellect and fear of his secret of him talking getting out. And then the credit for solving these problems they face is usually bestowed upon Bernie, a concept that, yeah, could get repetitive, but these situations range from semi-normal things like school help or more outlandish problems such as landing a a jumbo jet to stop it from crashing in the initial pilot episode. You see what I did there? I bet that one flew right over your head. No? Oh, okay, fine, I'll stop. But the series found a way to take the same format and make it unique, but more importantly, fun in each episode. Now, fun is subjective, but for me, I had such a good time watching the shenanigans this man and dog duo would get into. It's also really funny, which is great to see the writers had a lot of passion in crafting every detail in the scripts. I found myself genuinely laughing out loud at the back and forth that Corneal and Bernie would have. I also laughed out loud at the physical slapstick nature the show would intersperse every now and then. And I don't even like slapstick comedy for the most part, and for this show, a mostly forgotten cartoon from the early 2000s, to genuinely get a laugh out of me based on physical comedy alone is a testament within itself. The show only lasted for about 26 episodes, which is roughly 52 if you count the each 12 minute segment as their own episode, and finished airing in a little past mid-2006. But in a strange turn of events, the show had a brief second life. Nearly a decade later from the show's original release, the show was given another go in 2014. And while it was fully finished with its English dub, it only ever aired in Australia. The only place I could find these episodes now is on YouTube from their show's actual verified account, but I will talk about the YouTube thing later. The show, while keeping the same aesthetic, clearly had a subtle, yet noticeable animation change. It came back with a much more cleaner and sleek look due to it being completely done with flash animation. So while the vibe still feels right, there is a small difference in the expressiveness of characters movement, so it kind of felt like part of the charm that the original run of the show had was missing. But it was still cool to see something like this happen to a show that was relatively forgotten. But why did this happen? How did this show even get a comeback? How did this Nicktoon even completely miss to returning to Nick itself? Well, to start, this show, from the beginning, was not even a Nicktoon. <laughs> All right, all right, no need to be dramatic there, buckaroo. Let me break this whole situation down from the start. 
Cornel and Bernie is a French animated series. It actually premiered in France on France 3, a French public broadcast channel in late 2003. Its journey to the US channel Nicktoons had a lot of middlemen go between before it would even air. The BBC, the British Broadcast Corporation, and no, the C does not stand for channel like a lot of us would think, they acquired the show itself to add to their kids programming block. They dubbed the series from French to English and put it on Saturday mornings replacing the Fairly Odd Parents. But why would the Fairly Odd Parents be playing on a channel in the UK. Simple, syndication. The act of licensing certain material for publication or broadcasting usually within different territories around the world. So the BBC, and yes, I'm still only talking about the British Broadcasting Corp and nothing else, had several syndication deals with one being Nickelodeon. They would trade different shows they had the rights to to play on each other's stations. This allowed Nickelodeon to have first look rights to any of the new shows under BBC's ownership. And this is how the US would get Watch My Chops and rename it Cornel and Bernie. And thus from that point, especially with the lack of records of this stuff archived online, who would have known better that this technically wasn't a Nicktoon? I mean, in my eyes, and maybe even your eyes, it is, but on paper, it isn't. From early 2004 to 2008, Nickelodeon had full rights to show the show, but as far as I know, they stopped airing Cornel and Bernie on August 19th, 2006, the date of the last episode of the series. Of course, until 2014, but the deal between Nickelodeon and the BBC was long over. And like I said, it only premiered in Australia, and I guess it got canceled after that? I, I don't know why. You're the, a come for a come a fool, a Russian. A young man, a priest, stop making a funny face at me. Ah, that, that'll do it. So that was Cornel and Bernie, a show that I remembered but could only tell you involves a dog, a dude, and a whole lot of vivid colors. And, and aside from the clip that I just showed you, I was very pleasantly surprised during my rewatch of this show, as it is very easy to look back on things with rose-tinted glasses, trust me I do it all the time, but with this, I literally had no idea what I was getting into since I forgot almost everything about it. I mentioned this earlier, but something that is really cool is that you can actually watch this show on YouTube, and yes, with all of the previous never before aired anywhere else besides Australia episodes. So if you want to relive this show or watch it for the first time and also see the episodes we never got to see on Nicktoons, it's free on YouTube and I highly recommend giving it a shot. It's also bittersweet to go back and view these shows as it's a reminder of what could have been if networks like Nickelodeon would have risked showing this or some of their other forgotten shows a few more times on their main channel instead of multiple hour-long blocks of SpongeBob and Fairly Odd Parents. I mean, it replaced Fairly Odd Parents in the UK and Nickelodeon handpicked this show for syndication, so why not treat it a little bit better? And please don't take that as a diss to the Fairly Odd Parents or SpongeBob, trust me, I love them as well but we could have sacrificed one of those 10 episodes in a row that they would have shown with any of the forgotten Nicktoons. And even though Cornel and Bernie technically wasn't a Nicktoon original, the show could have gone on to be something a lot larger if shown to more eyes and received a better deal. But Nickelodeon knew what already worked and they weren't big on taking the risk for new IPs. It's unfortunate, but at least the sweet part of the bittersweet sentiment is that this show was a fun and pleasant rewatch. If you had the free time to check it out, I highly suggest it. Even watching the episodes that I never saw before, albeit not as charming as the original show run due to the animation, and that's a personal gripe, was still a fun time, and it's worthy of checking out if you enjoy the early episodes of the show. I have a long list of forgotten cartoons and shows that I will cover here on this channel continuing our series of shows we barely remember, but please let me know in the comments below what other less remembered shows you'd like to see discussed. So if this type of video, as well as the dark, weird, and strange type of videos I do catch your attention, please please feel free to hit that subscribe button for me as we are so close to hitting 50,000 subscribers. And again, I cannot say thank you enough for that. I truly do appreciate it. And make sure to drop a like on this video. It really does help the video out. And again, I appreciate that very much. I'll see you in a few days with a new video, but until then, later.